let's talk about titrations. Titrations are laboratory processes that we use to help us determine the concentration of an acid or a base. Now, in order to figure out the concentration of an acid or a base, what you have to do is you have to use a setup that looks like this. So what you have is a stand, a retort stand with a burette clamp. A burette clamp holds this long um, calibrated glassware called a burette and it is incremented, usually um, holds about 50 milliliters. And what you would do is if you were trying to find, let's say the concentration of acid in vinegar, the acid would go in the flask and the opposite of an acid, which is a base, would go into the burette. Whatever substance goes into the burette is called the standard. It is the one that you know the concentration of. Okay, so you can't have two unknown concentrations. If you're trying to find the concentration of an unknown, you must know the concentration of what you are titrating it with. Now, what we do is we would titrate this acid with a base and we would titrate until what is called the equivalence point is being reached. That is when all of the moles of acid have been neutralized by moles of base. And you have a visual cue, which is known as the endpoint. The endpoint is determined by adding some indicator like phenolphthalein or bromothymol blue, and it will turn color when that equivalence point has been reached. Now, there's always some error associated with the endpoint because when you think it turns a faint pink color versus somebody else and so forth, um, there is a little bit of variation there. But ideally, we would like the endpoint to match our equivalence point. Now, when an acid neutralizes all of that um, base, we would say that the moles of acid equal the moles of base at that particular point. Okay, so let's see how some titration calculations um, occur. And hopefully you can watch the video on how to carry out a titration just so you can see visually what that would look like um, moving forward. So our first calculation would be this scenario. You have some calcium hydroxide and it is being titrated with some hydrochloric acid. So what they're saying is you've got this setup where you've got your burette, okay, and it's in your burette stand, and you are trying to determine the concentration of calcium hydroxide. Now that is your base. So that would be going inside of your flask, the one that you were trying to find the concentration of. The one that you know the concentration of, in this case it is HCl, would be going inside of the burette. What they're telling you is that the initial concentration of your acid is 0.05 and it took 25 milliliters of that in order to neutralize the base. So the volume of your acid is 25 milliliters. Now let's take a look how much of that base was in the flask to begin with. Well, they said that you were neutralizing 345 milliliters of this base. So the volume of your base is 345 milliliters. What we need to do before we move forward is we have to write out a um, neutralization equation. And remember, neutralization is really just a double displacement reaction. So we take a look outside, inside. And remember that an acid plus a base added together always yields some sort of salt and water. So the salt that you're going to get is calcium chloride. And the formula for calcium chloride is CaCl2. Remember, calcium has a valence of 2. Chlorine ion is a negative 1, crisscross. And you also get water, the H and the OH hooking up. We must balance this. So we see we've got 1 calcium, 1 calcium, 1 chlorine here. We've got 2 chlorines here. So we must put a 2 in front there. We take a look at our hydrogens. We've got 4. So we must put a 2 there. And everything else balances. So this is really just stoichiometry, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the concentration of the base. That is our unknown. 
What we have to remember is in order to calculate concentration, you need to have moles of base all over volume of base. Moles over volume. Okay, now the only way to get moles of base is by looking at all the other information that's been given. So step one, balanced equation. Step two, figure out the moles for the substance that you know the most amount of information for. So if we were to rearrange this for the acid, moles of acid equals concentration of acid times volume of acid. And remember, it needs to be in liters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 0.05 moles per liter. There's my concentration. I'm going to divide this by 1,000. So 0.025 liters. And what I end up getting is a value of 0 0.00125 moles of acid. I noticed that it is a two to one ratio. So the next thing that you must do is you must set up a ratio. What I can do very simply is to figure out my moles of base, I need to divide by two my moles of acid, okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna divide the value that I already had in my calculator and my moles of base because of that ratio is going to be 0 0.00625. Now, if your calculator put that into scientific notation, it would read 6.25 times 10 to the negative 4. I have enough information now to calculate the concentration of my base. I have my moles of base. I have my volume, which I need to put into liters. So that is 0 0.345 liters. And when I put that into my calculator, I end up with a concentration of 0 0.0018 moles per liter. And what I want to do is I want to check my sig fig. So I've got one sig fig here. And so that would be the one that I want to report to. So 0 0.002 moles per liter. Now, there's another way. So this is what we call the four-step um, stoichiometric solution. You can also use a generalized formula to calculate titrations. And what you would do is you would do moles of base times concentration of acid times volume of acid equals moles of acid times concentration of base times volume of base. So let's take a look how that would work. What I do is I take a look, when it asks you for moles of base, I look at the stoichiometry there, and it happens to be a one. The concentration of acid was given, which is 0 0.05, and the volume is 25. I take a look at the moles of acid from the stoichiometry from the equation. That is a two. I'm trying to find my concentration of base. So that's my unknown. And my volume of base was 345. Now, when I go to rearrange, I would bring the two and the 345 to the bottom. So in rearranging this to solve for concentration of base, if I was to write it as a generalized equation first, you would have moles of base, concentration of acid, volume of acid, all over moles of acid times volume of base. So if I rearrange that, I substitute in my values. Okay, so in my denominator and my numerator, Let's just take a look what I've got. I've got 0. 0.5 times 25. That gives me 1.25. If I do 2 times 345, what I get is 690. And let's see what I end up getting. If I divide those two, and I get the exact same value as I did over here. So I would say that this is the quick version of how to solve um, titration type calculations. You can choose either one, whatever one you are most comfortable with. So let's take a look at the next scenario. You've got 
50 milliliters of 0.5 potassium hydroxide completely neutralizes 125 milliliters of phosphoric acid. What is the concentration um, for this acid solution? So in this case, because they are asking us to find the concentration of the acid, that would be going into your flask. And in your burette is your standard, the one that you know the concentration of, and that happens to be your KOH. Okay. Start off with a balanced equation to start off with. Potassium hydroxide plus phosphoric acid. Okay, single arrow. Outside, inside hookup. So the salt that you're creating is potassium phosphate. What is the formula for potassium phosphate? Well, remember phosphate is PO4. It has a charge of negative three. Potassium is a plus one, crisscross. It's K3PO4, and you also get some water, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we balance this equation. So we're going to put a 3 in front of the KOH, and we're also going to put a 3 in front of the water, okay? Because you've got six hydrogens in total. We need six over here, and everything else is balanced. I like to also write down everything else that is given. So you have 50 milliliters of KOH. So that is the volume of your base is 50 milliliters. You also know the concentration of the base is 0.5. You know that you have a volume of acid, which is equal to 125 milliliters. They want you to figure out the concentration of the acid. So I'm going to use the short um, version. So I'm going to take moles of base times concentration of acid volume of acid equals moles of acid times concentration of base volume of base. Notice that we've switched the moles for either side. So it's base with the concentration of acid and volume of acid and here it's acid with concentration of base. So try not to make that mistake. What they're asking me to figure out is the concentration of acid. So I'm going to rearrange this equation to isolate CA. So Na, Cb, Bb as a numerator all over Nb, Va. I'm going to substitute in the values that I do know. The moles of acid would be what is in the balanced equation in terms of the stoichiometry. That is a 1. The concentration of the base is 0.5. The volume of the base is 50. I don't need to put that into liters because if I have milliliters on top and milliliters on bottom, those units will cancel out. Moles of base, um, I look at the stoichiometry, which is a three. And the volume of acid is 125 milliliters. So what I do on the top, I do 1 times 0.5 times 50, and you get 25, all over 3 times 125, which gives you 375. When you do 25 divided by 375, you get a concentration of 0 decimal 0 6, 6, 6, repeating. Now, again, I want to take a look at my significant digits. One sig fig, this happens to be one sig fig, and this is three sig fig. So I can only report to one sig fig, so it would be appropriate for me to report this as 0 0.07 moles per liter.